When people think of the Galleria dell'Accademia, they think of the magnificent statue of David, but there's a lot more to the museum than the statue. Before we see David, let's take a look at the first room you enter, the Hall of the Colossus, which is one of the opening acts for the star attraction. The room acquired its name during the 19th century when it housed the plaster cast model of a large ancient statue of the twins Castor and Pollux, which is no longer displayed in the gallery. It now hosts the plaster model for the marble sculpture of John Bologna's Rape of the Sabine Women. John Bologna, a Flemish sculptor inspired by Michelangelo, created for the first time a tightly knit group of three figures carved just from one block of marble, which offers multiple viewpoints to the observer. The cast depicts three figures connected by a serpentine-shaped movement, with one man lifting a woman into the air while a second man crouches. The name of the Rape of the Sabine Women was suggested by his contemporary, Vincenzo Borghini. The sculpture suggests that one man had abducted the woman and the husband looks on in horror. The Rape of the Sabine Women was an incident in Roman mythology in which the men of Rome committed a mass abduction of young women from the other cities in the region. Modern scholars tend to interpret the word as abduction or kidnapping as opposed to a sexual assault. Giambologna's ability to sculpt bodies in the old classical style with figures of naked women in seductive poses increased his fame at the end of the 16th century. The left wing of the Hall of the Colossus exhibits six examples of 15th century altarpieces shown in chronological order to show the development of the Florentine school. Starting on the left with a square panel by Andrea de Gusto from 1437, it ends with Domenico Ghirlandaio's artwork on the far right. Here we see three large altarpieces. The largest panel in the middle is by Pietro Perugino, which was commissioned by the monks of the Abbey in Vallombrosa in 1500 for the high altar of the church. The main subject is the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, surrounded by singing and playing angels, featuring various musical instruments and colorful draperies. Down below the main scene, Perugino painted four saints connected to the devotion of the Camaldolese monks. Among them on the extreme right is St. Michael the Archangel, dressed up in glittering armor. To the left of the Assumption is Filipino Lippi's deposition from the cross. It shows the moment in which Jesus Christ is taken down from the cross after his death. The panel was begun in 1504 by Filipino Lippi and after his death was completed by Perugino who was responsible for the entire lower part of the painting until 1507. The two levels are stylistically very different and thus create a separation. The upper part features Filipino's typical search for motion and movement, a large number of characters moving about the cross in equilibrium and fluttering ribbons. Raffaellino del Garbo's resurrection was originally painted for a church in a monastery in Monte Alavetto in Florence. He was a pupil of Filipino Lippi. The main work on this wall is the front panel of a wedding chest called the Cassoni Adamare, belonging to the Adamare family, depicting a typical Florentine Renaissance wedding feast and portraying medieval streets, monuments, and precious costumes, witnessing the customs and wealth of the noble families in the early to mid-15th century. Before you get close to Michelangelo's David, you will see many other works by the master, including the group of four unfinished marble statues of slaves in this, the Hall of the Prisoners. They were created in the 1520s and 1530s as part of a monumental tomb for Pope Julius II, which was later scaled down in size. The statues seem to try and escape from the marble block. It is now claimed that Michelangelo deliberately left them incomplete to represent this eternal struggle of human beings trying to free themselves from their material trappings. The young slave seems almost bound within himself, burying his face in his left arm and hiding the right one around the hips. The study of human anatomy is highlighted in the left elbow and the careful lines of the bent biceps and triceps. His face, which is just beginning to emerge, seems so youthful by comparison with his muscular nature. The Awakening Slave is one of the most powerful and expressive works among the slaves. It is the least outlined of the four prisoners. The figure feels like it is trying to explode out of the marble block that holds it. Michelangelo is famous for saying that he worked to liberate the forms imprisoned in the marble. 
he saw his job as simply removing what was extraneous. This endless struggle of man to free himself from his physical constraints is a metaphor of the flesh burdening the soul. The third statue is the bearded slave, the most finished of the four slaves. The figure is almost free, only his hands and part of his arm, probably plan to hold a cloth, are unfinished. The face is covered by a thick curly beard, and the thighs are bound by straps of cloth. The torso is finely modeled, revealing Michelangelo's deep knowledge of anatomy. The fourth sculpture is the Atlas Slave, although we don't get a great look at it here. The male nude seems to be carrying a huge weight on his head, hence he is named after Atlas, the titan who held up the entire world on his shoulders. The Palestrina Pieta is a marble sculpture from the Italian High Renaissance dating from around 1555. It was formerly attributed to Michelangelo, but now it is considered mostly to have been completed by someone else, such as Niccolo Mangini or John Lorenzo Bernini. The Pieta depicts three figures, one of them the body of Jesus Christ. The sculpture was originally in a room besides the Santa Rosalia Church in Palestrina and was owned by the Barberini family. The most important masterpiece in the Galleria dell'Accademia is Michelangelo's statue of David, possibly the world's most famous statue, which is housed in the Tribune. The 17-foot-tall statue was commissioned by the Florentine Republic, who saw the biblical hero slaying the giant Goliath as a symbol for the creation of the new and growing Republic. Because of the nature of the hero it represented, the statue soon came to symbolize the defense of civil liberties embodied in the Republic of Florence, an independent city-state threatened on all sides by more powerful rival states and in some respects by the powerful Medici family. The eyes of David, with a warning glare, were turned towards Rome. David was originally commissioned as one of a series of statues of prophets to be positioned along the roofline of the Florence Cathedral, but was instead placed in the Piazza della Signoria, where it was unveiled in September 1504. The statue was moved to the Galleria dell'Accademia in 1873 to protect it from the elements, and was later replaced at the original location by a replica. Another replica can be found at the center of the Piazzale Michelangelo. The statue, which was created by Michelangelo from 1501 to 1504 from a single block of marble, was instantly admired for its proportions and attention to detail, and brought instant fame to the 29-year-old Michelangelo, who chose to depict David as an adolescent instead of a young boy, as was customary. The statue appears to show David after he has made the decision to fight Goliath, but before the battle has actually taken place. The statue is a Renaissance interpretation of a common ancient Greek theme of the standing heroic male nude. Italian painter, architect, and writer Giorgio Vasari had this to say about the statue. Quote, When all was finished, it cannot be denied that this work is carried off the palm from all other statues, modern or ancient, Greek or Latin. No other artwork is equal to it in any respect. With such just proportion, beauty, and excellence did Michelangelo finish it. End quote. In April 1527, after the expulsion of the Medici from Florence, Republicans entrenched in the Palazzo Vecchio were trying to dismiss the Medici supporters who pushed at the door. They threw stones and tiles from the windows, and a bench struck the left arm of David, breaking it into three pieces, recovered by a young Vasari after being abandoned for three days. This probably produced a split of the slingshot, clearly visible behind his back, the loss of some tips of curls, and a small rupture along the lower lid of the right eye. During World War II, David was entombed in brick to protect it from damage from airborne bombs. In 1991, the foot of the statue was damaged by a man with a hammer. It was then found that the marble that Michelangelo used contained many microscopic holes that caused it to deteriorate faster than other marble. Because of the marble's degradation, from 2003 to 2004, the statue was given its first major cleaning since 1843. So we have a nice collection of musical instruments. 
The Museum of Musical Instruments hosts a collection of about 50 musical instruments. The works reveal that music played a primary role in everyday life and official celebrations of the Medici court. The musicians hired by the Medicis and their instruments at the court of Grand Prince Fernando were portrayed by Anton Domenico Gabbiani in a cycle of canvases painted from 1685 to 1690. It's like uh, a harp. And it is in marble because it was a gift for the Prince Ferdinand of the Medici family. You see him there, very elegant, dressed in green, with the musicians, uh, with the um, singers uh, he often invited. Among them, the castrate, the castrated singers. The fourth from the right side is a castrated singer. You can tell it from the effeminate face. One of the most important works exhibited here is the one-of-a-kind tenor viola made by Antonio Stradivari in 1690. The viola is built in red spruce and maple wood, decorated with the Medici crest and mother-of-pearl ivory and ebony inlays. The tenor viola is part of the five instruments used in the Medici quintet, a unique group of five-string instruments built exclusively for the Grand Prince Fernando in 1690. The viola is a masterpiece, the only one entirely conserved in its original form. to be as the father of modern piano. That's a copy. Original uh, upright piano, so-called, uh, by a pupil of Bartolomeo Cristofori called Del Melo. We have a, on the extreme left side an original English uh, harpsichord from the 18th century. And you know that the mechanism of a piano is like a little hammer. <laughs> These next few rooms are dedicated to Florentine Gothic painting, featuring go-back altarpieces coming from the most important Florentine churches and convents. They have uh, green, they have Byzantine faces. They are so different from the faces you have seen until now. Because they were painted in the 1250s under a strong Byzantine. Christ was crucified, and then we have the birth of the twelve branches corresponding to the twelve apostles. The largest panel exhibited in the hall is a tree-shaped cross by Pacino di Buonaghita, symbolizing the tree of life. The painting was originally housed in a Florence convent. According to the Apocalypse, this tree represents salvation and offers gifts to humankind depicted as fruits alongside the twelve branches. The scenes in the roundels hanging from these branches represent episodes of Christ's life, his passion, and glory. The tree is rooted in the Garden of Eden at the very bottom, where scenes from Genesis about creation and Adam and Eve's life play out. The four figures seated or kneeling at the base of the cross are from left to right, Moses, St. Francis, St. Clair, and St. John the Evangelist. Up above in the cusp is the celestial court of heaven, with enthroned Christ and the Virgin Mary, surrounded by angels, saints, and prophets. Between heaven and the cross is a pelican piercing its breast to feed its young with blood. It represents a symbol of Christ's sacrifice on the cross for the salvation of mankind.
The Arcana Room features the Pentecost by Andrea Di Cione, showing the moment in which the Holy Spirit, symbolized by a white dove on the top, appears as tongues of fire and descends upon the Apostles and the Virgin Mary. The painter depicts a large standing Madonna that dominates the central stage of the composition, surrounded by six kneeling Apostles and two angels in flight who are witnessing the arrival of the Holy Spirit. Three Apostles are set in each of the lateral panels. In particular, one of them looks outward, involving the viewer in the sacred event. Another artwork of note in the room is the large go-back piece featuring an imposing godfather enthroned behind the crucified Christ and with the white dove which symbolizes the Holy Spirit. The depiction of Trinity is inserted within the central panel surrounded by two saints, St. Romuald and St. John the Baptist. The panel was painted in 1365 by Nardo de Cioni for the chapter house of the Monastery of St. Mary of the Angels in Florence dedicated to St. Romuald. The saint was the founder of the Camaldolese Order. The main central cusp shows the symbol of human salvation, the Agnus Dei or Lamb of God. The most important and famous panel painting in the hall is the Coronation of the Virgin, which was done in the 1370s and was restored in 2011. It was created by Jacobo de Cione with help from two other artists. The panel was known in Florence as the altarpiece of the Mint and was commissioned by the magistrates of the Mint, which helps explain why the panel features a massive amount of gold. It represents the Coronation of the Virgin surrounded by ten saints and two prophets.